And welcome back to the show. Samaritan Daytop Village has been dedicated to improving the quality of life for New Yorkers who've been facing adversity for more than 60 years. Now, recently, New York City Mayor Eric Adams announced the opening of the Bronx Support and Connection Center, helping individuals struggling with their mental health as well as substance abuse. And joining us now to share more details is the Vice President for Health Services and Community-Based Programs at Samaritan Daytop Village. We're pleased to be joined by Charles Madre, and uh, Charles, glad to have you with us. Hey, th thank you, Darren. Uh, certainly appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate you, and uh, congratulations on the opening of the new center. Uh, it's got to be a good feeling being able to uh, help to bridge the gap for so many. Listen, it, it, it's, it's phenomenal. You know, it's been uh, something that we've been working on for many, many years, and it's something that's certainly needed. Um, substance use and mental health issues have been at the forefront in the last couple of decades. And finally, it's, you know, I think we're getting some traction here to um, provide services on the spot for folks that really, really need it. Yeah. So <clears throat> as the center opens up, uh, what will be some of the services that will be provided to help, uh, to help out the public? So it, it, it's comprehensive mental health and substance use screening and assessment to provide short-term uh, connection to longer-term care. So the program is gonna be open 24-7, uh, 365 days. We'll be fully staffed with social workers, addiction specialists, counselors, and most importantly, peers. Peers are folks with lived experience, both in substance use and mental health. And they'll be providing the screening assessments for folks that come to the center. Initially, to, to get to our center, uh, and I'll refer to our patients as guests. Uh, that's the model that we have. Um, so we refer to, to them as guests. So going forward, when I refer to guests, it's our patients. So our guests will be brought to us by the 40, 47 precinct or the Be Her team. And the Be Her team, it's a new initiative that started last year by um, May Adams uh, Office of Community Mental Health. and they actually respond to low level mental health cases. They screen the individuals um, to make sure that they're not a threat to themselves or, or others, and then they'll bring them over to us. Um, we provide short-term respite. We provide uh, three meals a day for our guests and comprehensive service. At the end of uh, a five-day stay, it's our hope that we connect them to an, an outpatient treatment program if, if they're not already connected or to a substance use treatment program, either residential, outpatient, whatever the needs are. We do a comprehensive assessment and then get them connected to permanent care, either back to their original provider or a new provider that um, we have in our database. When we look at uh, the fact of substance abuse and mental health, uh, give me some of your insight, given the fact that COVID-19 really further exacerbated uh, a lot in this area. Uh, what's it been like for you, the organization, dealing uh, over the course of now that we're, you know, on the other side, now we're talking about some other variants, but we're not going to go there. Uh, but talk to us about what it's been like for you really uh, through this COVID pandemic uh, in the area of mental health and substance abuse. Have we seen a tremendous in increase in spikes in cases? So actually early on in, in, in the pandemic, we actually saw a significant spike because folks were locked up. They weren't able to go out and get the illicit substance that they would normally get. So uh, we did see a spike in our admissions. Um, that's in our current opioid treatment programs, in our outpatient programs, and certainly in our residential programs. We're beginning to see a little bit of a taper off now, but it, it, it's still very high. Um, so from a tr treatment perspective, we are seeing a significant number of folks coming. COVID did uh, uh, harm citizens of New York. We've seen a uh, devastating impact from a mental health standpoint. And in the last uh, two and a half year, years, I would say both, both our guests and our staff have been impacted by mental health issues, stress, depression, anxiety, fear, um, you know, a host of things that they certainly need help with. And we are here to help with those situations. So again, there is the support and connection center that people can get tapped into. Uh, who's going to be available to be a, uh, be, be service to this? So 
anyone can be of service to the program. We accept folks that are 18 years and older with mental health substitutes or a physical health issue. They'll be screened by the Be Her team or be um, or have a conversation with uh, a member of the 47th precinct. Uh, based on what they present with, they will call us to make sure that we have availability at the site. The, the center has uh, 19 beds and we have six, six recliners. So at full capacity, we're able to accommodate 25 guests. Uh, right now, we're at a very low capacity, so we're hoping that uh, the number of referrals pick up, and we're very excited to provide this valuable service. So what's it been like for you uh, being able to service these new people that are coming through your doors, having this uh, resource right here uh, in the borough? It's something that the mayor has touted and has gotten uh, citywide support. So give me the internal feeling for you. I, th this is really exciting. You know, it actually reminds me of... Um, during the HIV epidemic, you know, we, um, but who would have thought four decades later, we would be where we are. During the HIV epidemic, there was a high increase in education, training and, and reimbursement. And we were able to get it on control. But this center, there's been a significant amount of education to the public. There's been significant training. You know, we've trained our staff intensely and certainly uh, the program is well funded with those three things we'll be able to, to provide this care and we'll be able to shorten the 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 impact of folks suffering with substance use and mental health uh, and i'm hopeful that it will not take 40 years or four decades to make a difference it, it, it's been long overdue that we need to put the funding and put the resources where it's needed most yeah well, I'm glad to know that you're here in the borough and uh, certainly Absolutely. congratulations, much needed. Uh, and I know that the community will be benefici uh, the beneficiary of uh, some much needed support and assist. Charles, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, thank you, Darren, appreciate it. All righty. All right. Well, I wanna let you know if you want more information, visit the website, SamaritanVillage.org and then follow them on Facebook as well as also on Instagram at Samaritan Daytop Village. We have more show and we encourage you don't go anywhere. Open's coming up in a few.